Hey, how's it going? There's been a concept for a type of run that I've tossed around for quite a long time, and today we're just gonna do it. We all know that Cubone had an awful run. You don't need to remind me. And if you are new to the channel, just know that it was really, really bad. It's currently ranked next to last, and even that could probably be debated. It just had a lot of problems, but what if you could solve some of those problems and give Cubone perhaps a shot at some redemption? Now this is a snippet of Cubone's Bulbapedia Gen 1 learn set, and at the bottom of the page is this little section. Cubone can learn these moves by transfer from another generation. Now this list offers some great moves. As far as this list goes, you would get the two elemental punches from Goldenrod and you would just learn them via TM. There's not much mystery there. The important moves come from the new breeding feature introduced in Gold and Silver. Now if you took a Larvitar with Rock Slide and bred it with Cubone, that baby would then have Rock Slide. Now if you took that baby Cubone and bred it with a Bulbasaur or a Charmander that needs Swords Dance, you would then have a new baby Cubone that knows both of those moves. Now is everyone in the class following me here? Good, because this is the basic premise of the run. If this were back in the day and you were doing this legitimately, you or a friend would get that cube on these egg moves and one of those elemental punches and then you would trade it over to your copy of Pokemon Red and you'd be ready to go after you unlock trading of course. Now obviously I'm not going to be doing this legitimately and this cube on will be our starter, but it's very important to know that this is easily possible and doesn't really require any cheating of any kind. It's a realistically feasible run and I'm gonna fight you if you say it's not. This run will be using the same rules I always use and if you are new or maybe want to brush up, they're literally in the description of every video I've ever posted so look down for that. I'd also like to say that I do solo runs often and if that is of interest to you, feel free to subscribe to be kept up to date on my videos. Likes and comments help small channels break into that dreaded YouTube algorithm so other people can see the videos. So if you are someone that just never interacts or you just don't ever want to comment, do me a solid. I'm asking you personally. Scroll down, type in Eggbone in honor of Cubone's redemption story that's going to be told today. Now with all that out of the way, just sit back, relax, maybe go grab yourself a soda pop, and let's see how much better Cubone can possibly be considering that it's currently next to last. Sound good? Let's do it. At the start of the game, I make sure my Cubone has good IVs, and for this run, our name will be Eggbone because I'm very creative. Keep in mind that the entire run is predicated on the concept that this Cubone is bred and hatched in Generation 2, and then traded over to us in Generation 1. To more accurately simulate this, I'm not going to be the original trainer, but we'll go into the significance of that soon enough. Just notice that the OT in the bottom says Eggmat, which isn't me. As far as moves go, this Cubone has the moves I mentioned in the intro. Bone Club is standard, but Rock Slide and Swords Dance are the bread egg moves, and I also decided to go with Thunder Punch for the last move over Fire Punch because water coverage strikes me as just overall better. Now that you know the premise of the run and the moves that I have, let's look at the rival battle. Bone Club is just a god awful move, but it is necessary, and this overall battle just isn't anything special. The main thing to notice, and we'll go over the impact of this later, is the boosted experience. This is great for now and looks great up front and it helps out a lot since the medium fast leveling group is a little slow at the start of the game but from there Cubone doesn't have to do a lot of extra battles even in the original run Cubone performed very well during this part and just in the gym badge portion of the game in general I do take out the three bug catchers in Viridian Forest just to get some extra stats and some extra levels and here having a move like Rock Slide is honestly kind of overkill for this section but I'm not going to complain about that quickly when you're done with this it's time for Brock while Bone Club is pretty awful it's it's super effective and the damage is easily enough to get past the Geodude and I'm honestly surprised I didn't miss here but that's not going to be the issue. Notice after the fight our boosted experience gets us up to level 11. This is where the run gets interesting. I'll go into more detail but just know that traded Pokemon without any badges will only obey you up to level 10. This is something that I did not plan on dealing with and it really caught me off guard as the Onyx absolutely crushes me as my Cubone just disobeys my orders and does whatever it wants. 
sense. In the short term, focusing on just this battle, it's not too big of a deal. Having the egg move of Swords Dance means that while I'm level 10 and have full control of our little baby Cubone still, I can just fully set up because I'm still in control and that ensures that I'm going to hit really hard when I do hit level 11 and Cubone decides that I'm too weak of a trainer. I do get through this one on the second attempt. I take the first badge, it's not too bad. And before I talk about the significance of this unforeseen problem, after I buy from the Pokemart, I save at 15 minutes and that's a pretty top tier time. Cubone could get close to this time even if I was just using the regular Cubone, but it's just worth noting that it has a fantastic Brock time and Cubone honestly needs all the victories it can get if our last run is anything to go by. So let me take this next little segment to talk about why obedience is bad and will be a huge struggle in the upcoming stretch of the game and just continue to be an issue for a large portion of the entire run. Think of Cubone like Ash's Pikachu during the first few episodes of the original anime. It just doesn't want to do anything Ash needs it to do and that's exactly what's playing out right now. Cubone is like my stepson and he doesn't want to do what I say because I'm not his real dad. If you aren't familiar with how disobedient Pokemon act, let's just go over it real quick. When I select a move, the common thing that can happen and often does is that it will just straight up skip my turn by saying things like Cubone is loafing around, Cubone turned away, or Cubone ignored orders, among other things. It can also use another move at random instead of the move I pick. Honestly, that's probably the best case scenario since you actually do something on your turn. On top of that, there are two worst case scenarios for this. Sometimes the Pokemon won't obey and it'll just hurt itself in confusion. This one seems to be a little bit more rare, but the absolute worst result you can get is when Cubone decides just to take a nap mid-battle. Sleep in general is such a powerful status in Pokemon, and it's even more so in Generation 1, so having your little disobedient Pokemon just self-induced sleep on itself is just not good to say the least. You see some of this on display during this time on the first trainers after Brock, and needless to say that this can make things really tedious or really frustrating, sometimes both, because you're going to get some bad luck here and there. It means battles can take a lot longer to get past, and constant saving is a must in case things just don't go your way. And now that we know what our disobedient little eggy boy is going to do to make our life harder, what's the solution to this? The short answer is to get badges. Specifically, the even number badges will raise the level cap of how long your Pokemon will obey you, and as we are inching closer to Cerulean, it's obvious from this point that getting the second badge as soon as we can would be the best solution, but that leads us to another problem. Cubone is very weak to water, and Misty is notoriously tough to get past even in optimal situations, but when you take into account that Cubone doesn't want to listen to us, it just makes it that much more of a problem. And if this all sounds awful to you, it kind of is, but I would also say that you should keep an open mind. I've done a ton of these runs, and the fact that I didn't account for obedience and haven't really ever had to deal with it in my entire Pokemon playing career actually had me a little excited. It's rare when you play a game as much as I have to be tasked with a new problem that requires you to carefully tread in a new ground and just kind of figure it out on the fly. It honestly made this run go from just a casual speed run to something much more interesting than I had initially thought it might be. Hopefully I didn't go on too long about the obedience, but in this run, it's going to be the thing that defines it and it's important I get a full explanation to you guys up front so we are all on the same page. And with that said, our moveset is great and there's really no need to get Mega Punch or really do any extra battles. So by the time I progress through Mount Moon, it's time to tackle the problems that Cerulean is going to present. At this point, I'm foolish and I think, what if a level 17 Cubone that doesn't listen to its trainer can just beat Misty real quick? And I'm swiftly brought back down to reality with a critical hit water gun that makes me rethink my life decisions, so I double back to rival number two. The first attempt is awful. My Cubone doesn't listen to anything for the first few turns and I'm just slowly whittled down. Eventually, I do get off a rock slide and you can see that it does great damage, but I'm just finished off and this isn't what you want to see. And this fight at times just feels feels impossible. Having the high probability of skipping your turns and going against a matchup like Pidgeotto that is normally very annoying and volatile anyway is just a recipe for some frustration. Gust does decent damage to us, Pidgeot likes to crit as well, and on top of that it has Sand Attack. It's the biggest menace to society type move in the entire game. Even if things go correctly and the battle plays out like it should, it's still not smooth sailing. There are many times that I make it further into the fight, but the obedience is never never going to go away and the Rattata can just finish you off while you're skipping your turns. I tried this fight a ton and at this point of when I was actually playing the run, I contemplated restarting and taking away the traded aspect 
aspect of it since I didn't originally anticipate the obedience aspect of it, making things this hard. I thought it was going to be too hard, but I pressed on. I even go back to Misty to see if I can just hit the lottery of luck, and I'm just getting blasted here. I'm in a bit of a pickle, but at least there are some positives to look at. Battling the two trainers inside of Misty's gym does get us a couple of levels, and even though we can't beat Misty herself, maybe fighting rival number two at level 19 rather than level 17 might make things more manageable. But I would like you guys to take a look at how annoying obedience can really get in this battle against this swimmer. I just really want to hammer home the point and give some visual evidence of how long it can really stretch things out. Never mind the horsey just almost killing me on its own, but the shelter just spams withdrawal and I'm essentially just tapping my foot waiting on coupon to actually use the move that would just end the battle and I'm locked in this one for several minutes, it's very long. After that, I'm forced to progress in spite of obedience against rival number two. I do reset once due to sand attack spam, but I do get by on the second. The extra levels definitely helped here because at level 19, Rock Slide is a one shot and it's only a matter of time before you get one off. Being healthy and getting through the first fight alone isn't enough to make me confident, so I do waste a lot of turns going for three Swords Dance to fully set up on the Helpless Abra. This means that my moves are going to hit like a truck and that offsets skipping my turns because all I need to do is hit once and that'll end the fight and that's what happens here. With the battle over, Obedience is a little bit more manageable against the lesser trainers. It's important to know that it's just really tedious. Any battle can just turn into a struggle, so resets and then going to heal, they happen often, but all in all, it's not really that interesting, so let's skip ahead after Nugget Bridge to some real problems. As I alluded to earlier, skipping Misty is a viable option for most runs that are weak to water. Rhyhorn, Charmander, Growlithe, those are all examples of runs where I had to come back later, but with how tough obedience is making the main fights, I need to try to get by it now to help this run be as good as it can possibly be. Just looking at the footage, you can see that this is a very tall task. Even under normal circumstances, it would take multiple thunder punches in most cases, and just simply making it to the star me is not guaranteed. I'm obviously going to need a lot of luck here, but unlike the last two fighting runs I've done, where I needed a lot of luck on that champion fight and the Alakazam, and just to get back to that point to retry, I have to redo four battles, this is not nearly as bad in comparison. It goes without saying that I feel a ton here, and it seems that Fate itself is telling Cubone that he should not be doing this fight now, but I'm a very persistent dude and I keep resetting to see that one magical set of events to get this done. Ultimately, that leads us to the successful attempt. At level 24, I don't outspeed the star you, and it'll go for water gun about 90% of the time, but the damage honestly isn't that bad. The real thing that takes so long is you not having your turn skipped. Here, I get a thunder punch off, it paralyzes, and since star you's speed is now halved, I go first the next round. I get off another thunder punch to take us on in the fight and already you can see how much luck you would need but remember this is the easy Pokemon. Starmie is where you really need the roll of the dice to go your way and to get lucky. Through all of my tries I find Misty going for an X defend works the best because if you land the thunder punch on the next turn the extra defense doesn't matter because it's a special move. This gets it down to about 55% health and from there I take a water gun and that takes me deep down into the red but I do hang on. Another thunder punch gets Starmie in the red and this is where I need the most luck of all. It misses its water gun and once again I hit the thunder punch for lethal damage and Jesus Christ it felt good to finally luck my way through this fight. You guys might know I'm not a big fan of luck but sometimes you just gotta keep resetting. I feel like I've recently been relying a little bit more on it but there's not much you can do. If you want to run to be good you're gonna have to hope for these chances sometimes. And through dozens and dozens of resets we finally hit our goal and if you notice Pokemon up to level 30 will now obey us but throughout this point we're already level 26. And while it's great to get past a tough hurdle and have full control of Cubone for now, it's a temporary band-aid to our problems during the short term. We have 5 levels until we hit level 31, and then disobedience will pick back up, so doing as little battles as I can is a must, but that's not a big deal because the increased experience ensures that we aren't underleveled. Inside of the SSN, I did pick up Body Slam because at this point in the run, I was convinced that it would be much better than Thunder Punch, but we'll see how that goes. I also pick up the Rare Candy guarded by the gentleman before making our way to the next main battle. At level 28, I'm in the clear and Cubon will obey my orders and now it's time for some revenge since the last rival fight was pretty bad. While this one isn't completely clean, I go in missing some health just to show my confidence. I do heavy damage, but I do take some scary damage back from the Kadabra, but even that isn't enough. I get leech seated, but at this point I just finish off the Ivysaur and 
overall take the victory. After the fight I'm level 29 and I have two more levels so after I see the SSN off I get to do the third gym without worrying about obedience once again and let's be honest here a ground type with high defense that essentially is just gonna wall Lieutenant Surge hard and even if Cubone did not listen to me for 90% of the time during this fight it's likely that I would just still win. As it stands now it's a complete slaughter and Bone Club is just bonking every one of his Pokemon on the head. I do hit level 30 at the end so we need to start preparing for that. On the second battle going towards Rock Tunnel I do hit level 31 and the fun can commence once again. While I can't deny that this makes the battles in Rock Tunnel significantly more annoying, persistence makes it not too bad. You can see from the example that it does take quite a while. The first fight is specifically annoying because the, their enemy Cubone is just going to love to go for Growl but thankfully I do have Thunder Punch. It comes in clutch to offset the Growl and take out the slow pokes. With that out of the way, let's pick back up in Celadon and talk about our options here. The main thing that would help the run is to get the next even badge number that would raise our cap to level 50, but just like with Misty, it's going to be problematic. Erica has the infamous 100% crit razor leaf and it's going to outspeed me for the foreseeable future. I don't think all the resets in the world will save us from that right now, so in the short term, I run my errands, I do pick up a couple of carbos to help our low speed out, and then I go ahead and I tackle the rocket hideout. As for the Giovanni encounter, Cubone is well equipped to take this one out. Sure, there's the usual turn skips and the annoyances, but like I've said many times, I'm persistent until I fully set up Swords Dance a few times, and that allows me to hit hard enough to sort of offset these turn skips. Overall, it's not too bad, and we move on. And now we're at level 37. I decide to go ahead and do Erica just to see how it's going to go. At first, it's exactly how you would expect. I try a few times, and I'm just getting razor leaved, or I'm getting put to sleep and then getting razor leaved. I'm getting ready just to move forward to Pokemon Tower, but I decide to do some more tries because I'm stubborn. And to my shock, there's an attempt where I actually go first, so that must mean that we have the same speed and Victory Bell is actually a speed tie. I still lose this attempt pretty soundly, but with this new revelation, it means that there's hope to get it done and solve a lot of our problems right here, right now. After failing several more tries, I get the attempt that I wanted, a turn one dig that goes first into a critical hit. On the second turn when it does damage is exactly how you want to start this fight out. It's perfect. And after that, I always talk down about Tangela, and I'll stick to my guns by saying that this is one of the worst Pokemon in existence, but if anything, it's extremely annoying considering the circumstances. I try to cruise by it, but then constrict and binds start to add up. They start slowing us down. From that point, I swap to start making sure that I set up Swords Dance fully for the Vile Plume, and by the time I'm finally able to get this abomination of a Pokemon down, I'm sitting at less than half health going into the final challenge. And as for Vile Plume, it does go first. It's scary, but it goes for a Mega Drain. It does heavy damage, and it looks like this attempt is over with if I disobey right here. But Cubone does me another solid. It digs underground, and with the Sword Stance boost I set up on Tangela, it's enough to one-shot and get us through one of the toughest challenges in the run. This is a milestone victory for Cubone because like I said earlier, this means Cubone will obey us up to level 50 and makes things much more smooth in the coming segments of the game. Critical part that you have to keep in mind is that we need to plan our route from level 37 to level 51 perfectly. It's absolutely crucial that we can make it through Koga, Sylph Co, Rival Number 5, Sabrina which will be the next even badge, and if we can do all of that flawlessly in these next 14 levels, obedience will essentially no longer be an issue and this run has a shot to be extremely good. But let's not look too far ahead and focus on the now. That means Rival Number 4, and let's quickly zoom through this speed bump since we have control of Cubone for now. Rock Slide is fantastic in this fight, but wait a second. Gyarados has high Hydro Pump somehow at level 23 despite not learning it until level 41 and that gets us really low. A single rock side is not enough to knock it out and it it faints us. That's a reset. And that's pretty upsetting. Why does he have why does he have hydro pump? I had to look it up. I had to double check myself. The second attempt is looking the same. I get hydro pumped and I get extremely low, even lower than last time. But I do go first, and the second rock side gets him out of the picture. And from there, Cubone does show a little bit of resilience by making it through the rest of the fight. It's not ideal, and although this one only took two tries, it's a stark reminder of how awful Gyarados can be when you have a water weakness. So that's just gonna be fun later to think about. From there, I finish 
finish up the tower, I get the Pokey Flute, and I make my way towards Fuchsia. This is a decent time to address while I don't rush Earthquake here since it's easily my strongest move, but the simple answer is that Dig is more time efficient for now, and by that I mean there are still several time skips where I can dig out rather than manually leave. Parts like Pokemon Mansion, Silf Cove, Sabrina's Gym, they all have a nice chunk of time saving with Dig, and even something like Blaine's Gym which saves you less time but it's still decent. Those four skips alone are worth hanging on to Dig for now until I'm past all of them, and having to do an extra turn to do the same damage isn't that big of a deal. I'm sure one person out there might have been wondering, so there you go. As for Koga, super effective damage and access to Swords Dance make this one pretty easy. I'm a little liberal on fully setting up Swords Dance because I'm not sure I'll need all three, but at the end of the day, Weezing just uses Self Destruct, but Cubone has a beefy defense stat and he tanks it like a champ. I get this badge and I get that sweet speed portion of the badge boost, and we are 8 levels from 51 before we lose control of Cubone again, so we need to book it to these next parts of the game. I pick up the last 8 gems of the run and then it's time for Silph Co. I do the bare minimum, but I do pick up Earthquake, but I'm not going to use it because I've already mentioned why. This means it's time for rival number 5, and if I can get past this right now, it bodes very well for the rest of the run, so let's see how it all shakes out. Things are looking fantastic in the first attempt. While Rockside cannot one-hit the Pidgeot, it still does a lot. With high defense, the damage is just negligible, and I can just take it out no problems. As far as the pesky Gyarados that magically knows Hydro Pump, it misses, and I easily breeze past it now, and I'm getting pretty excited about this run. Things are looking great. Growlithe is whatever. It's a quick rock side away from death and we just move on. Alakazam, as always, are where things start to get dicey. I don't outspeed it. I take some heavy damage from a side beam. Dig is enough to one shot it, but I'm missing a pretty good bit of health going into Venusaur. And from here, it's probably a mistake, but I desperately try to set up one sword stance to hope maybe I don't get a razor leaf, but that's exactly what it does and the attempt one is over with. On attempt two, I try to fully set up sword stance on the Pidgeot. It gives me immense damage, but leveling up right after the Pidgeot means that I don't have any extra speed badge boost, and Hydro Pump presents a familiar problem. I fall to a non-critical hit pump. I try several more times to no avail. If it's not Hydro Pump from Gyarados, then it's a Razor Leaf from Venusaur. I make a slight tactical retreat after about six more failed attempts, and this doesn't mean that I'm conceding this run from being great. Remember we have boosted experience from being a traded Pokemon and levels come pretty quick, where some runs like Machop needed to fight a lot of battles to get four or five levels and basically has to sacrifice close to half an hour of in-game time, Cubone doesn't have to do that much. What I end up doing is battling just a few trainers to get up to level 47 and I'm hoping that slight little boost of stats is all that I need. Back at rival number 5, we already know how Pidgeot's going to play out. I hold off on Swords Dance and I use a couple of Thunder Punches that's enough to get by. The new thing here is that the levels allow us to outspeed the Gyarados. Rock Slide we already know is not going to be a one shot and in the first attempt back it does miss its Hydro Pump and it's easy enough to take it out the following turn. Afterwards it's Growlithe's turn and in a perfect world I would have manipulated my experience to where I leveled up right after the Gyarados but I didn't think that far ahead it didn't happen so right here it's now or never to set up Swords Dance just to have really powerful attacks moving forward and eventually I take it out and we move on. Surprisingly I don't level up after Growlithe so I still have that extra badge boost speed and this means that Alakazam is now trivialized. It's a very easy one shot from a Rock Slide and obviously I'm going to level up right after this fight and I lose my extra speed but I still have all of that attack. I don't play any games here. I dig underground before any shenanigans have a chance of happening and the stab neutral damage of dig combined with the previous sword stance boost are enough to one shot. This is very important to the overall speed of the run to get through this very fast and efficient. I still have two more levels of obedience left as well so I would say that this particular victory was a defining moment of Cubone's run and things are looking very positive right now. As for Giovanni number two it's insignificant so much so that it's essentially just background footage for my post rival number five thoughts. I just set up Swords Dance and I just let loose. I'm not playing any games here. I wipe out every Pokemon with a single dig after that. I do hit level 50, which means in one more level, we'll lose control of Cubone again. And since we meticulously planned on this route, that's really all that we need since Sabrina will set us free from our obedience curse. Despite being all the way at level 50, Cubone is still outsped and Psychic from Kadabra does not feel great. It
it hurts, but what hurts even more is that Mr. Mom with its little bitty mom hands double slap us until we faint and I fail the first attempt. It's more of the same in the second attempt. I take a psychic, but this time I roll the dice a little bit. I call the Mr. Mom bluff that it'll just use non-damaging moves or maybe just use double slap only. I want to fully set up here and I stand tall. I do just that eventually before taking it out. Venomoth at this point is an easy one shot with Rock Slide from all the boosts. So let's just move on to the difficult part of the fight. Alakazam comes in and unfortunately I do not outspeed. It sets up Reflect. I dig underground and even through the Reflect, Cubone is doing so much damage right now that it just doesn't matter. It's a one shot and conveniently we ding to level 51 to where we would have lost control of our little eggy boy. Doing this fight right now is absolutely key as we don't have to worry about obedience again until level 70 and with the last gem eliminating the cap entirely, it essentially means that obedience is no longer a thing in this run and that feels great. But we still have a run to finish, so let's not relax just yet. After a nice casual swim down to Cinnabar, I do the bare minimum and after answering some questions about the elusive Tombstoner brother, it's time to beat down Blaine. I only got time to give Blaine a couple of words here. Sword Stance, Rock Slide, Dig, they're just a deadly combination for fire types. There's no need to go over any strategy here. It's an easy one shot victory and I'm sure you could probably just close your eyes and imagine how this fight would play out. The special badge boost is okay, but let's just keep it moving. This leaves one gem standing and we are no longer bound to the time skips that Dig gives us. So now with Earthquake in hand and learned, Cubone has ascended to its full power and it's unfortunate that Giovanni has to be in the way of that. I go into this fight missing about half my health and I don't even care. I do want to fully set up, but that just sets up Rhyhorn to actually get me kind of low with some stomps and whatever little fury attacks it wants to do. When I'm boosted out of my mind, I go on a straight tear. Since I don't level up after Rhyhorn, I can outspeed the Doug Trio, which is probably Giovanni's last hope of getting off some more damage. And if you just want an idea of how much damage Cubone is doing right now, look no further than the fact that I can one-shot Rhydon, which is normally a very bulky Pokemon against physical damage. With all the gems down and the full obedience of Cubone, Rival number 6 is the last battle before the true test, and let's just dive straight into it. The start of this battle goes just like the last couple. I fully set up from the start, and I'm going to try to brute force my way through this one. I only take some very minor damage before taking out the Pidgeot with a Rock Slide. Rhyhorn is up next, and it's a swift and merciful death. We just move on. Now it's time for Gyarados. I outspeed it, but as luck would have it, Rock Slide misses, and a Hydro Pump takes us out. I hate Gyarados. I'm just going to say it. Skipping ahead in the second attempt, I set up two Sword Stance earlier. I go for a Thunder Punch, and with a weak special, it's not enough to one-shot Gyarados, but it does trigger a Retroactive Potion, and I can finish it off after that. As far as Growlithe goes, I did save one Sword Stance to hopefully get me some extra speed and maybe it would make a difference later. Eventually I do finish it all. Next up, it doesn't matter. I don't outspeed the Alakazam and I take a hit. It hurts. I'm at about a third health, but I can finish it off in one hit from an Earthquake. And last up is Venusaur. I'm very boosted. I do outspeed it and the neutral Earthquake powered up with Sword Stance is enough to one shot it and I take this fight honestly without too much hassle. Now there's only five fights left and if anyone remembers the original Cubone video, it did pretty decent through the pre-Elite 4 section of the game as well. Granted, this run is doing much better, but the main thing I'm trying to say is that it took me like 50 attempts to get past just Lorelei, and Gyarados was an absolute nightmare on Lance and the Champion, but I'm optimistic. I'm feeling pretty good about this run, but the main thing here is to not get overconfident because the hardest challenges in the game, they're pretty much going to be right here at the very end where the best of the best runs are determined and Cubone, I've looked him in the eye, he's itching for some redemption. Before I enter the final gauntlet, it's time for some rare candies. I need to save some for experience manipulation, but this does get us to a very respectable level 64 and I can't stress enough how much the boosted experience has helped us out. Honestly, it might be just as much of a help in this run as the extra moves have been, but I'm not sure if I want to make that statement just yet. But there's enough stalling going on here. We have an ice weakness and this fight was very painful in a past life with another Cubone, so let's see if our revenge tour can kick off on a positive note with Lorelai, or are we gonna Laura die? The main thing I was looking out for besides the obvious super effective damage was her using Growl, but I did plan ahead. At level 64, I do outspeed and Rock Slide does great damage. I take a nice chunk of damage in return from Aurora Beam, and of course Lorelai is gonna get the attack drop. Luckily, I had the pre-mentioned foresight to hang on to Thunder 
Thunder Punch over Body Slam, and I finish it off. Cloyster is next. I once again outspeed. Thunder Punch does respectable damage. Cloyster misses a clamp, and that means the second Thunder Punch moves us on in the fight. Next up is Slowbro, and it does have Water Gun, but it also has Withdraw, and those are the moves it'll go for. I get fortunate, it prioritizes Withdraw, and I take this opportunity to boost our attack and get some badge boost with Sword Stance. When I'm done setting up, a couple of Thunder Punches is enough to get the job done, and we move on. As for the Jinx, the Sword Stance boosts are enough to pretty much offset the attack drop, and a single stabbed Earthquake is more than enough to quickly drop her and move on to the end. And with our little Egg Bone boosted out of its mind, a single Rock Slide is enough to one hit the Lapras, and that leaves no chance to take a Blizzard. Overall, this is very clean, and to get past on the very first attempt is a great sign moving forward. I'm honestly surprised Lapras was a one shot despite an attack drop, but guys, I'm telling you, Egg Move Cubone is the real deal. Now let's take a little break. Last week, Bruno gave me a little bit of trouble. It actually took a victory from me, so believe it or not, I do give him a little bit of respect, and I didn't want any doubt on who was going to win this battle. I do fully set up Swords Dance right from the start, and Earthquake obliterates each of his Pokemon. It's short, it's sweet, it's easy, and that's just how I like my Bruno fights. Moving on. Next up is Agatha, and being a ground type with the best ground move means that I easily have the damage to get through the fight. The fight starts off potentially bad, but Gengar does miss a hypnosis attempt, and when Earthquake one-shots it, I know that I'm going to be in the clear. Golbat comes in, and it does a turn one haze. It's very annoying. Remember that haze does eliminate my 12.5% badge boost. So to offset that, I do a couple of swords dance here. I miss some moves and it takes some extra turns, but eventually I rock slide it and moves its own. And from there, it's just an earthquake fest. I outspeed the next two Pokemon and they can't survive a hit. Being at such high health going into the last Gengar means I'm basically in the clear here. I do get hit with the Confuse Ray and I hit myself, but ultimately one more quake takes the match and Agatha is yet another easy victory for Cubone. But Lance is up next. And there's one thing that I've been worried about, and it has already given me a pretty good bit of trouble in this run, and that's Gyarados, pretty much the antagonist in this fairy tale run. In back-to-back -back attempts, I have to relive the nightmare. Just a non-critical hit Hydro Pump can 100 to zero us, and even though it was just two defeats, I was already wondering if I'm gonna have to go back and grind and pretty much concede at what was looking like a really great run, but I'm persistent, I shrug off my doubts, and I keep at it. On just the third attempt, Attempt, things go my way. Since Rock Slide is not a one shot, I opt to just go with Thunder Punch. It does good damage, has 100% accuracy, and then from there it misses the Hydro Pump, and that's the only opening I need to seize this opportunity. To fully take advantage of slaying the proverbial dragon, I fully set up Swords Dance here to go Super Saiyan in terms of damage, and when I'm done with that, it's an easy one shot. The next Dragonair is also a one shot, but when it comes to the Aerodactyl, I still don't outspeed it, but fortunately, it just goes for a bite. I tank it like it's nothing, I finish it off. Last up is the Dragonite, and in true fashion to the run up to this point, I do have the damage to one hit it with a super effective rock slide. And outside of a couple of hiccups, it's time for the champion battle, who has a Gyarados of his own, so I was interested to see how this is going to play out. First up is Pidgeot. With high defense, I'm not worried about any damage here. Not even a crit would do a whole lot here, but I do need to set up some Swords Dance. I go for two, and I hope that the speed badge boost along with the attack buffs are enough to carry me for now and when I'm done I do discard this bird to the side and I move on to more pressing matters. Alakazam has been an absolute nightmare in recent runs and here I don't outspeed it and the worst case scenario happens. I tank a psychic right to the dome and it does half my health. An earthquake does finish it off but missing half of my health is scary when the champion has two more super effective answers for Cubone. Next up is Rhydon. It's not an issue. I do have have one more swords dance to set up and all I can do is hope that it's enough. I also get a leer for further boost and that's pretty great but one earthquake it's over and let's see how the rest of the fight plays out. Gyarados pops in for one more final showdown and unfortunately for it being later in the fight means that I've already had time to set up so I outspeed it and the extra attack means that rock slide is finally enough for a one shot and I don't have to worry about this menace anymore. Thank god. Arcanine is the penultimate Pokemon and no 
no one out there is really worried about this puppy. I'm more than capable of just swatting it away with an earthquake. Unfortunately, I do level up and I lose some of my boost. This sadly means that I do not outspeed and Venusaur charges up a solar beam. But since my attack boosts are still intact, Earthquake does massive damage and it one shots it before it can get off the said solar beam. And that's it. Cubone has done it. I've hidden the time of this run, but suffice it to say, this traded Cubone with egg moves is definitely not a next to last place Pokemon like my previous Cubone run was. I was honestly shocked at the time here, but let's just look at it together before I start talking about it any further. Cubone finishes with a level of 72 and a honestly pretty crazy time of 3 hours and 32 minutes. That's right guys, if you trade over an egg move Cubone, it can actually be about 15 minutes away from Ghastly's time, which is a run I previously thought untouchable. Keep in mind that I did make a couple of mistakes in the run, like I didn't have to get Body Slam, that would have saved maybe a minute or so, and I could have probably been a little bit faster here and there, but I don't think we would have ever reached Ghastly's time. It goes without saying that this run was very impressive and I know that not a lot of you guys make it this far into the videos but I need to directly ask the few of you that do if you think that this version of Cubone deserves to remain on the tier list or if I should treat this like I did the Garchomp or the Giratina runs that are not officially on the tier list. If I did count it, it would be number two on the list and the pre-evolved tier list would look something like this. It's getting pretty big now to where I finally need to split it up and I'm glad we've made it through that many videos but overall the concept of the egg move run was a resounding success. Boosted experience, rock slide coverage, and swords dance badge boost really turned one of the worst runs I've ever done into a top two run. Couple that with juggling obedience, and I had a pretty great time on this one. This was a very interesting run. Now obviously this gets me interested into what other runs can be improved in this way, but I'm not really going to dive too deep into it just yet. Psyduck and Execute are the two that pop into my mind immediately. But guys, I don't have much more to say. These runs lately have been killing it, and I hope that you've had as much of a good time watching it as I did putting the video together, and I also hope that you have a great rest of your week, and I'll catch you guys on the next video. Bye!